Alright y'all, let's have a look into this book on the new phone. So this is 200 megapixels. <laughs> Allegedly. Looks way better. Hold on, I've got my old phone here. Let's have a look. Hard to kind of focus them both, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look into this book. So I finally got this book back. I asked my parents for it like a hundred times. <laughs> so apparently for 160 health problems. Hold on, I'm just going to take my retainer out. I'm lisping. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look into it. By Bill Gottlieb. I've never read that other book. New Choices in Natural Healing. So the, the bit that made me want to read it is this, because it says from 300 of America's top doctors and natural healers. So if there's 300, you know, people's input, that's like my website. Oh, that's something. <laughs> I don't really smoke tobacco, but there's a little bit in there. Hiding away. Guess what that's doing? Revibrating. That's part of the process. I'll do that first before any crystals or anything. Anyway. It's a cleanser, remember? So they use it like in the Amazon. It's, uh, you know, pure. a lot of people involved oh this is good right so they've set it this is how i would have done it too so i'm happy about this like set it up on each ailment on each illness so you got starts with acne addictions age spots fuck this is going to be good <laughs> bad breath even nice blisters bladder infections bunions burnout burns bursitis and tendonitis well, I could probably go straight to 82 belching <coughs> on call <laughs> caffeine dependency wow nice that's I'm interested to see what they're gonna say for that because I mean things like canker sores and stuff all right I bet you could find that stuff really easy Interested to see what they say on depression. Diabetes 1 and 2, diarrhea, diverticulosis, even dizziness. Well, that's like vertigo kind of stuff, isn't it? They probably even have vertigo. Let's have a look. No, no vertigo. So, must be under dizziness. Dry hair and split ends. So, girls, stay tuned. Earaches, earwax build-up. It's going to be interesting because for earwax build-up, I like using those ear candles. And I burn it just past where they recommend burning it. Only just past there. Just because you need to get that real heat up. But you don't want to burn your little hairs inside your ear, so you've got to be very careful. Gout, grief, even grief. What? <laughs> grief, guilt. Grief and guilt they've got cures for. In this book, interesting. Heartburn, heart disease, heat exhaustion, heat rash. Yeah. HIV, interesting. A few good ones. Macular degeneration, I want to see that. You know what, let's dive straight into the next one that I'm interested in. And not start at the start, yeah, sorry. <laughs> want to keep going 
or I'm kind of interested in the overweight one just to see what they're going to say. Premature ejaculation. Should we just go straight to that? <laughs> Come on, you all want to see what they're saying. We'll go straight to that one. Five, page 500. Let's go. 505. Let's see what they say. Oh, they're going to say exercise, aren't they? Easy exercises help avoid premature ejaculation. Someone, I've got, you know, stuff on orgasms and stuff in uh, the Unk method and stuff I talk about in Conscious Zoom, my website, on one of the back health pages at uh, probably like page 40 or whatever. If you go down the tabs, you'll see like all around health and stuff keep going. <clears throat> and there's several health pages near the end. They don't have a problem, he said. So apparently premature ejaculation is not a medical problem. Uh -huh. So don't get medical solutions. I think he's going to suggest exercises, I have a feeling. Exercise that thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So he's saying don't take um, all the usual suspects, basically, because he's mentioning, you know, SSRIs and stuff. So. All right. So he's saying don't go there, by the way. Usually defined as ejaculating in four minutes or less, or earlier than your partner wants or needs for orgasm. Oh, come on, you can't be, I get it, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes you, I know women get so upset when you don't, like, orgasm with them, <laughs> but sometimes you find the spot and you got to go for it, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's even premature, but I guess the women see it that way. You gotta hold it until they want you to, because they're always in the control freak mode. No, but I guess you know it's better that way, and you make waves that way. Um, and obviously it's more of a joining that way, right? And less of a let down to them and so on. So yeah, he's just talking about reflexes. So he says, think of changing your ejaculatory reflex as a challenge similar to an athletic training to improve his reflexes. Let's see what he says. Kegel exercises. Kegels. Special variety to stop ejaculation. There we go. Invent it then. You squeeze the muscles in the anal area as if you were trying to stop the flow of urine. This helps you to be... Oh yeah, and then exercise that muscle. This helps you to be aware of and strengthen the pubococcygeus PC muscle, which is kind of muscular hammock or sling for the sex organs, the urethra, and the rectum. The most awareness and control you have over the PC and other sexual muscles, the more control you'll have over ejaculation. So there you go, that's what their suggestion <coughs> is from, I don't know who this guy is, Dr. Brewer. He must just be one of those 300 um, doctors, you know. So I'm guessing we're going to see different doctors give their opinions in different sectors and, and different uh, chapters and segments. <coughs> So let's move to this section, self stimulation, top athletes practice their moves, <laughs> I think I know where he's going with this, the more practice man has in getting near the point of no return but not actually cresting it, the more f familiar with that sensation than he will be and the less urgency it 
will have <coughs> yeah, the more control you'll have over it so he recommends masturbating three or four times a week for 30 minutes <laughs> okay All right. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, I was watching a video just yesterday, and um, they were saying, you know, men's testosterone rates, the rate of testosterone is down by like two-thirds from like over a thousand to, you know, the average being like 300 or 400 max. So that's pretty interesting, because right? everybody goes on about um, the feminizing nature of society these days, and, you know, the intensity of the control grid. <clears throat> so external prostate spot as well less urgency pressing an area on your perineum i've heard that one before the space between the anus and the back of the scrotum stimulates the prostate the gland that supplies the fluid for semen during ejaculation also you know a lot of men are getting prostate cancer and you know dandelion by the way can help in this area and if they're mentioning it that gland specifically here right the prostate gland <coughs> pardon me i know that um dandelion my tincture used to definitely heal that because i can feel it on myself right so when i was in uruguay i had a big tincture business i made 25 tinctures one of the most profitable things i've ever done because you know i'm digging up herbs i'm alcoholically extracting them and it wasn't like I was being a bad guy putting a lot of profit on it because my tinctures were cheaper than some of the competition. So you can't say, oh, so you just put real high markup on it and made a lot of money. No, I actually had quite cheap tinctures still. Some of them were, you know, 100 or 200 pesos less than competition, which is only a couple of dollars in Australian or American dollars here and there. But, you know, to people in Uruguay, it was something at the time. So, yeah, um, you know, that's a really good way to go. I definitely recommend the tinctures. I'm, um, you know, setting up the business again in Australia because I've got to do so much. I've got to do the whole thing from scratch because I've got to change the labels from Spanish to English. Um, so I've got to go back, read all the labels, go, you know, sit there on Google Translate and type them into a Word document, get them onto their labels, get the labels printed, get the bottles make the whole thing again i've got to do more research obviously and recheck things make sure of everything yeah so illegal i'm not even allowed to remember read this but am i not allowed to if it's by doctors you know what i mean because you know how recently i showed that video how youtube's banning alternative health videos like hardcore it's going to just blacklist them shadow ban channels take channels down so i'm thinking you know how can this be illegal because this is by doctors so anyway because apparently if the world health organization doesn't agree we'll fucking have a look at this world health organization 300 of america's top doctors how can i not be reading from this and i'm just giving my input from what i've just happened to have made and done in the past anyway so you can um do prostate you know movement and the thing is you know you're cracking stuff when you move your body it's always chiropractic so you want to get these things on the inside you know like dandelion tincture would be perfect not only if it is it you know a massively um increased delivery system than eating the herb because you put it with alcohol so it's delivering it past a lot of mucus blah 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 oils right it's making the herb get to the cell that's why i went with alcoholic extraction tinctures not oily tinctures anyway <clears throat> that stuff will make malleability on the inside right so it's more malleable so it moves more when so you're not cracking and crushing cell structure and, and you're more bending it and releasing toxins think of it that way and so definitely apple cider vinegar in my opinion here because of malic acid and it's not acetic acid malleability malic acid kind of makes sense anyway i keep telling that to every health pro professional i've like talked to and they just ignore 
what I just said. I think it's absolutely genius but and, and obvious. <laughs> it's kind of obvious, actually, not even genius. But anyway, if you understand acetic and malic acid, which I don't think they do. Taking a few slow deep breaths when you are aroused helps induce the sense of total body relaxation. So breathing, the next technique, says Dr. Brewer, decreases the sense of ejaculating urgency. Premenstrual syndrome, oh fuck, we might as well get straight back, straight into it, from, from the men to the, the women. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not uh, called sexist or anything. Most doctors call it PMS, time before a woman's period is a time of heightened sensitivity, anger, yelling at their man. Oh wait, whoops, it doesn't say that. <laughs> it says intuition, creativity, a time when a woman feels intensely bodily, emotionally and physically. Now yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> what it means to be a woman, says Dr. Hanley, a specialist at... Women's Health in Malibu, California. Oh, here we go. Irritability, anxiety, mood swings, depression, headaches, bloating, weight gain, constipation, sugar cravings, cramps, acne, breast tenderness, and backache are just some of the 150. Well, 150, wow. Now I know why they're yelling. To some of the 150 possible symptoms that are commonly experienced by millions of women with PMS. The first step in healing these symptoms, says Dr. Hanley, is to stop thinking that you're crazy or a bad person for being a woman. And it's just dealing with pain. Um, I also recommend grounding because it stops pain, <laughs> right? Negative ionization is the opposite of the positive charge accretion, which is pain. All positive charge is associated with pain and vice versa. And then inflammation and then sclerosis. Or scarring. So break the sugar habit. Well, that's a good good um, little thing there because sugar also increases pain, just on that note. So they've said break the sugar cravings as the first point. Second point, miso soup. Oh, it helps you halt the sugar binge. Yeah, I suppose so. You know, salt does in general um, as well. A good dip in the ocean is what I'd actually recommend because then your thyroid will open up, start working properly and pumping, and, and any chlorine will be, uh, you know, washed through, so to speak, and you're going to get your normal hormone functions. Oh, look at that. They've even mentioned sea salt. Interesting. So, yeah, go for it. Go for lots of swims in the ocean. Listen to me. I'm upgrading those two points by so much. Because uh, going in the ocean, you've got Ormies, orbitally rearranged monoatomic elements. Chlorine, remember, is... And the thyroid is a big problem, even with PMS. That's why I'm mentioning it. And so many women that I sleep with have thyroid problems. Um... So yeah, focus on that. I've talked about the thyroid before on the channel. Basically, chlorine <clears throat> um, wants to be attracted to it. So don't you don't go swimming in a chlorine pool. Anyway, I mentioned this in another video when I was talking about that Pleiadian mystique girlfriend I had. Pickled foods, not a bad idea. Ginger, definitely a good idea for um, PMS because like it's something I take when I'm sailing. I'm here on the boat. Um, yeah, it's something that I take when I'm sailing, you know, so you can't be inside here when you're sailing, you need your nose in the wind outside, and ginger is in those little tablets, I used to also have the little wrist, like, bands on your wrist that, like, go to it, sorry, I'm trying to point to my hand, like, there's a little knob on the thing, and it would sit there to stop a certain blood flow, I'm guessing, it's, bit, it's like pressure pointing. And then you'll take a ginger tablet, and that would help a little bit. But um, make it natural ginger, because those ginger tablets would make me feel a bit queasy themselves, because they're like a tablet of some, you know, it's dead. <laughs> so have have yourself some fresh ginger. Always the juice of stuff's the best, obviously. The oils have the noble substances. 
So it also says food stabilize your blood sugar again. So that's like two pages on blood sugar, right? And I think that's an important point. So no wonder they've made that. Oh, what's this? Light. Boost hormones naturally. PMS may be a sleep disorder related to a decrease in hormones, melatonin and serotonin. So yeah, if you smoke a joint, you're going to increase it. Smoke a joint before bed and that will help your PMS for sure. Uh, what else you can do? Sorry, because not everybody wants to because they've got issues with their ego because they want to become pain and ego. I'm not, you know what? I'm not even going to give another solution because that's what I recommend. Smoke the joint. Uh, vitamins and minerals for PMS. Oh, this will be interesting. Vitamin B, yep, definitely. Which one are they recommending? just the B complexes or what it just says vitamin B when was this written <laughs> to control excess estrogen yes it will it will help do that so yeah like B12 definitely a good one but yeah the whole B complex would you know oh, it's kind of its own rant on the B complex I think for me to summarize it really really quickly um, if you get into like tocopherols, tocotrienols, vitamin E's, all that, you know, all that end of the shit, you don't need them every day. Vitamin B's you need more often. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Calcium. Yeah, definitely. And you know what I think there, leaning on there as well, is, you know, not just hormonal stability and now vitamin stability because hormones are above vitamins. Um... Hormones tell stuff what to do. Um, so I think what they're actually... Oh, look, there's vitamin E as well. But um, I think what they're... Well, what I will add to this or say it's directing itself at is um, pH. So your acidity. Because both, both the B vitamin and calcium are, are very alkaline stuff. So, you know, a lot of fruit... Right. So vitamin E, let's see what they say. It reduces food cravings, anxiety, irritability, depression. Yeah. Um, you know what? Um, avocado would be good. Uh, avocado's going to help your thyroid as well because it's got glutathione. Right? And glutathione is premier premier hormone of the thyroid. And, you know... The avocado is going to have all the vitamin E range in it. Pycno, pycnogenol, never heard of it. I have no idea what this is. It's a food supplement, I'd say meh. Derived from pine bark or grape seeds. So eat some pine bark and eat some fucking grape seeds. Don't get a fucking pill or a supplement. People got to figure this shit out. You're going the wrong way. It's about way showing to the correct way because there is no way in supplements it's dead stuff it's going to make us grow less and etc it's not the way bioflavonoids for headaches oh, interesting genistein and daidzine i actually don't know those at all help control excess estrogen so a lot of men bitch men could use that as well because we've got this bitch men society i'm, I'm pissed off at the moment I've, I've got to get back on um glass water bottles because i'm drinking all this water out of these really like thin crappy plastic water bottles and that bifesnal a is already getting to me after a few months i, I noticed the difference Alright, uh, yeah, I would definitely, I'm glad they mentioned some Omega-3 because I was just getting to thinking about, hey, where's that sort of stuff? What about the oils? You want oil live. You want to be oil live. Oil, you know, contains the noble substances of all these things we eat. That's why I avoid supplements, right? It's dried out, it's dead. Okay, progesterone. I would expect them to always talk about that. 
They're saying there if you're desperate though. <clears throat> hey, what's going on? We're back to prostate cancer now. What just happened? Because <laughs> that was before this section. Right, weird. So we went from prostate. Wait, hold on. Oh no, it was premature ejaculation. That's right. Then we went into PMS and now it says prostate cancer. Yeah, let's have a look. Since it's all in the same area. Hold on, I'm just seeing what it says here. Progesterone cream, it says, uh, the recommendation by this doctor for progesterone cream is a quarter to half a teaspoon of the cream once or twice a day from mid-cycle to menses. Uh, rub the cream anywhere on your face, stomach, breasts. Hey, uh, call me if you need help. Arms or legs, especially there. <laughs> The progesterone is absorbed as soon as the cream touches your skin. Yep, alright. Yeah, your skin is your largest organ. Uh, let's see what it says about prostate. This will be interesting. I wonder if it will mention dandelion. Each year about 185,000 men are diagnosed with cancer of the prostate. I don't know, that must be in America alone. I'm guessing. Coenzyme Q10. Fuck, this is just never ending with this Q10 shit. Yes, but I don't think people understand what the fuck they're doing with this. The same energy of expansion and relaxation you'll get out of clove. Go for the clove. Fuck the Q10 in the tablet shit. Again, it's a supplement. It's shit. It's as shit as you can get. That's what a supplement is. It's dead. It's dead. We ground up the cunt. We, we fucking beat him up. We put him through a machine and we ground him up. Here, have this supplement. The bastard's dead. <laughs> Selenium, a powerful antioxidant. Yeah, Selenium is going to be better than the Q10 in my opinion. Um, or for prostate, no. Q10 would still be better. Um, yeah, they've called it a crucial mineral in the battle against prostate cancer, though. You know, I was thinking that it's important. I don't know. I would still... I just feel with the energy of each thing, and it's the energy of, like, the cloves, or the Q enzyme 10, what they would say, um, that will do the most clearing here out of those two. But selenium is more of a builder, so it's going to be something that builds it. So yeah, it's definitely crucial. It's just like when you take um, spirulina or chlorella. A lot of people don't understand chlorella is more the stripper and um, spirulina is the builder. So you take them in that fashion, right? You don't take spirulina first, you take chlorella first. And you're targeting whatever you're targeting. Anyway... Yeah, caution, cancer's complex, big professional rant. Moving on. <laughs> but it's true, you know. Um, zinc, yeah, I knew they were going to say that because I've seen that video of the sperm meeting the egg and there's like a zinc explosion. So definitely to do with, you know, your prostate, you're going to want zinc. Vitamin C and E, yeah, definitely. And it's not just about antioxidation because the cloves are more antioxidant Cloves are number one antioxidant, natural antioxidant. Vitamin C and E are way down the line. So if they're saying, you know, antioxidant help, it's not going to come from vitamin C and E. It's going to come from the clove that I've recommended. And don't have too many clove because they're very powerful. I'm going to tell my story again. I once did like a half handful of cloves and I got heart arrhythmia. <laughs> so don't do it. Because I was panicking. I was in my university and I was panicking. Oh fuck, shouldn't have eaten that many cloves. I had like half a handful. <laughs> um, but now I know. <laughs> fish oil, definitely fish oil. Because fish oil is like, yeah, with the fatty acids. But it's, it's fish oil. It's just, it's, it's a really um, interesting oil. Like it's quite sticky. 
Like if you think about chicken oil, where's the chicken oil? You know what I mean? But anyway, and you know, fattier oils from um, the fat on meat, like um, cow meat or whatever. So yeah, fish oils are always good. You always get those um, omega-3s. They're just a, a better oil for our building. The stickiness there is actually a good thing. Because you might think it's not because prostate being clogged and sticky. Anyway, don't know. Lycopene. Oh, interesting. So lycopene is the red pigment in all the red stuff, like um, tomato. Remember, you want to have that at like 60 degrees. So slightly cooked, slightly warmed up. That's the best for absorption. So they're saying for protection, yeah. Isoflavone, isoflavones keep cancer cells from multiplying. So they're phyt anti-cancerous phytochemical found in soy. Oh, I can't believe that I'm reading this. Soy? Do not have soy. <laughs> I don't want that in this, this whole video segment. Um, I don't want that involved in the last two segments even, either. A lot of soy is very bad, very GMO, etc, etc. It's just not good. You've got the estrogen factor in there. I don't even think it's necessary. I think you, um, I don't know, what are they saying? They're saying, so, they're saying isoflavones. So just look for any other food besides soy with that. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Natural plan to relieve prostate problems. Let's see what they say. BPH oh. Saw Palmetto oh. That's something I'm familiar with from uh, Uruguay Medical science doesn't know exactly why Saw Palmetto works There you go, they don't know everything This is something you would ask the shaman about <coughs> But I'm, I'm not experienced enough with saw palmetto to talk about it. I used it occasionally. I'd rather talk about cat's claw or something like that. I don't know saw palmetto that well. So I'm not going to make any comments. Because I didn't make any brews. So I can't talk about it. T taking 160 milligrams of saw palmetto extract twice daily can do the trick. But you need to talk to your doctor before starting this treatment. Yeah, definitely seek advice on this one, because I fucking don't have a clue about it. It's not common. Um, I did have a few brushes with it. I'm a bit familiar with it, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> nettle. Yeah, nettle's always, always awesome. Nettle, boosting the effectiveness of the saw palmetto. Interesting. So in conjunction with saw palmetto, but even by itself, guys, because nettle is just nettle. And what I mean by that is you can like almost have it with anything to, to help heal anything. It's just one of the very nutritional um, leaves. Um, how to explain it? It's, I don't know. It's more mineral. You know, it is very, I, I can't even explain it. It's like, because I'm trying to think, how do I differentiate it from spinach or something? Because people will say, yeah, well, Ben, spinach is also very nutritious. And, um, nettle is probably more, more wilder. And when we have all these wilder plants, we always find they have different chemicals in different ratios that do different stuff and protect more. Because they're fighting off insects and stuff in the wild. Um, and a lot of spinach is just looked after too much to, I think, get get harassed enough to get um, the wild chemicals going again. <laughs> That's how I'll, I'll say the story. Um, definitely nettle over spinach. And it's, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, they're both high in oxalates. I was going to say, I think it might be better for the oxalate problem. Um... I just get the feeling of the leaf breaking down easier. Although, 
It's very heavily mineralized and will have very heavy oxalation as well. So, I mean, it's just it's just one of the best herbs. It, uh, sorry, um, leaves um, in nature. It's just it's it's so well balanced. I think because when I taste it, the sweetness is there from the wide mineral spectrum. Um, and just a lot of spinaches these days are they taste shit. I mean, I can taste the difference. They might be heavily over ironed. Like they lean more on, on a singular molecule and stuff. Anyway, let's get off that ramp. Pygeum. For extra help, this herb derived from the bark of the African tree. I've heard of it, but I've not done anything with this. It works well in combination with sol palmetto and nettle. Says Eva Urbaniak, MD nutritional doctor Pygeum actually you know next time what I'm going to do is have my phone here and we can go on the internet and we can actually like have my phone here and we'll, we'll go on the internet and we can search these things and then you can see the leaf what it is and we can even read about it quickly because that way we can expand this book to be just a massive playlist this will go on for years <laughs> That that would be better, I think, because then we would get, you know, a really good... Um, I mean, I could make a $30 bandit out of each section. I might do that. Make a food plant teaching video of each little section. And then more thoroughly go through it with my phone here. And we can Google each herb and each leaf. Because I've been uh, off the research for like three years now. Because at the end of Uruguay, I did nothing but uh, travel with Oro and had to do a lot of stuff. But I didn't do so much uh, reading anymore. So they're also saying reflex points here on your ankle. Interesting. Clearing out congestion and helping restore it to health. So it's interesting that she said that because that's how I started by saying fuck the Q10, get the clothes in into you for clearing because remember I was saying that's got that clearing energy the coenzyme Q10 anyway so it's saying here to pinch the base of each heel with the thumb and the forefinger and milking type of motion so milk milk your ankles <laughs> that helps the prostate never heard this one before that's good so, using a milking type motion, slowly move from the base of your heel towards your ankle bone, below right. Wait. So, like, towards your ankle. Oh, okay. From the outside in. Like a milking. Okay. Be sure to cover the entire area of the heel below the ankle, paying more attention to the tender spots. So, yeah, that's like reflexology for sure. Wait, wait. Oh, okay. So for the pygeum, um, some naturopathic physician in Seattle recommends 25 to 100 milligrams a day until symptoms subside. Zinc. Well, they mentioned it before already, actually. 90 milligrams of zinc taper slowly to 60 milligrams and then maintenance dose is 30 milligrams daily <coughs> pardon me and since too much zinc can cause copper deficiency take two milligrams of copper with every 30 milligrams of zinc oh fuck but then you get into then you got to take a bit of this a bit of that <laughs> so that's why it's better not to take supplements at all and just like if you're trying to heal you've got to work out what food you need to eat that's been the focus of my my talks for like 10 years hey people still are like oh just do supplement and that <laughs> that's not what i found to work but uh, you know what um 
if you consider the tincture a supplement, which I don't really, but it kind of is, um, then yeah, that's the, that's the way you go because it's still alive. You can even make oil extraction. And this is not difficult, especially if you have a, you know, a cancerous problem. This would be the much cheaper option than, uh, you know, like, what's it called, um, radiation and all that. <laughs> but you know what, someone, re I was talking to some chick on the rock wall, trying to pick up some girl recently, some, some older lady, she was like 50, and she was talking about something about the cancer or some shit, and one of her, like, relatives or something, and I said, you know, about natural stuff and she was like no i definitely um go chemo you know chemotherapy just to make sure i'm like holy fuck man chemo is death itself so that's such an ignorant statement <laughs> don't even try because you don't know the other way at all all right so high lignin flaxseed oil twice a day with 400 inter international units of vitamin e the fuck talking about what's an international unit <laughs> oil your gland yeah the fatty acids but remember fish will be good for that <clears throat> fish will have some zinc in it too um depending um he also recommends a tablespoon of organically grown carefully processed processed under nitrogen high lignin flaxseed oil Oh, that's what they're talking about, yeah. Um, I don't know what they mean by 400 international units. What, what the hell that is, but... It's like a certain measurement metric, but... Flaxseed oil is no good anyway. We, I mean, we found this shit out so long ago, and doctors are still recommending it all. I knew that, like, 15 years ago. That was one of the first things I learned, that flaxseed is not one of the good... Like, it's not as good as... It was first brought out with the start of, like, the health movement. This is, like, before David Wolf and stuff, you know? Before, <clears throat> and I use him as a marker because he's the reason we see goji berries everywhere. And coconut oil in, in all the places. And all the fruit, and, you know, the fucking, he's, he's the guy that made the Nutribullet. The revolution. Uh, right, so that's it. It's going on to psoriasis now. I don't want to go into that. We've kept it just on the bottom end of the human body. Nice. So PMS, premature ejaculation, and prostate cancer. So that's 40 minutes. You should press the like button. Enjoy. Hope that helps someone. I'm definitely going to go through the rest of this book. Let's have a look at uh, the back if it's got like a big... Oh, look at that. It does have a big section at the back. Referrals and information. It's one hell of a book. So it's got everybody's addresses and everything. And then this looks like the doctors under resources. Panel of experts. Correct. So you can actually, you know, Google these people and maybe find them. Yoga therapy. Yeah, definitely in the context that we've been talking about, you know, stretching uh, your hips and your hip area for all three of those things, PMS, premature ejaculation, and prostate as well. So yeah, look, they've got <laughs> all sorts of people in here actually. Visualization. Guided imagery. So you've got med that's meditation. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, and then you've got all the experts here, 300 of them, fucking hell. All their names <clears throat> and titles. Good book, we're definitely going to go through this one. Yeah, I think this is going to be epic. This could get really big really quickly, this playlist, because I'm interested in getting back into this stuff. I'm also trying to get into IT again. 
But this is always just so interesting because it's so close to home, right? You always want to feel better. So look at that. All right, massive book. All right, subscribe. We're going to come back to that and read a couple of sections at a time. I might do a couple of food plant videos, you know, on one segment. Enjoy.